Welcome to Crossroads and happy Mother's Day, everybody. As you can tell, we've got a special guest with us today. Actually, got a couple special guests with us. Uh, this horse, just you know, just so you understand, this horse has been in here for a while, acclimating, and eventually the noise and the music just is white noise, just bleeds into it. You can see the one thing that was surprising to him was, oh, pictures of other horses up there. And, and the horses have tended to love the band every service. They go right over and stare at the band the whole time. So we have four services this weekend, four different wild horses that are unbroken, untamed, untrained. And uh, I found out about this when I met this guy. He's become a friend of mine. Initially, it just started out that he was uh, a person who did some interesting things, and someone knew him and said, you should have him on your podcast. I have a podcast called The Aggressive Life. So I said, great. I was former, a former professional rodeo rider, a bronco rider. I thought that'd be a fun guest. So we were on the, on the podcast, and we hit it off well, and it was just kind of interesting and fascinating. We did some emails back and forth over about a year or so, and then he reached out to me and said, hey, I've got, a, I've got an elk tag you can have in Idaho if you want. Uh, do you want it? I said, uh, let, me, let me pray about that. Yes, 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 I do, yes. So went out and we hunted together and got my first elk. It was wonderful, it was really, really cool. And I got to know him more and I found out what he did. And he was telling me this whole thing, he goes to prisons and he goes to different countries doing a thing where as we look at this interaction inside of the ring, where we start to learn something about ourself and something about how God is actually dealing with us. And so I said, hey, let's make sure that we get you at Crossroads. And so he's here today. Let's welcome Todd Pierce on up to our stage. Professional Bronco rider and uh, a legitimate horse whisperer. Is that, is that okay for you to call you a horse whisperer? Yeah, but I don't ever whisper. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what that means, but yes, sir. So Todd's gonna do, and he'll, you do in, you're gonna do in 50 minutes, hopefully, if everything goes okay. We've, you've had three wild horses, all are different every service, and you've been able to ride them for the first time in their life, every single one. This would have been something that would have taken a long, long, long time to do. You've got a you, very, very unique gift with this. How, how did you find this gift, or what came out with you in that? Hmm. Well, it was a journey as far as, I guess, if you talk about the gift with the horses, um, but it started really early in childhood because I um, dealt with a lot of rejection and found a lot of comfort in animals and found that uh, I connected better with animals than I did people. Good thing is that Jesus has taught me how to connect with people as well now, <laughs> so <laughs> it's kind of helpful. Yeah. That's good. And you, uh, you talk about, this is one of the things that mesmerized me, that a broken horse, or you actually refer to said broken horse, a trained horse or a freed horse, a broken horse is more powerful than a horse that's wild. Why is that? Unlike anything else, I believe in creation, horses were designed by God to partner with man, and it's evident in what you can see with just me and one horse can rule a herd of 50 other horses uh, simply because of our partnership um, that horse becomes exponentially more powerful he ends up with a vision he has protection um, and provision so he's stronger he's faster and he's got my brain so you're still surprised you're doing this inside of the church aren't you i'm actually yeah this is kind of surreal. I, I think I'd get used to it by now, but I'm not. Um, I'm glad that the lights are the, the way they are because I'm actually afraid to talk in front of people. And so, uh, but I did, this was the deal. As I told Brian, every church says they're going to do it, but nobody actually does it because they find out what it's going to take and what the insurance company is going to say and it don't go. And so that's all I had to say. <laughs> and then you just turned Brian to him loose. And, <laughs> and so I decided Watch just, this. let's just not tell the insurance company and everything right. worked out fine. It's fine, no problems. You get through a lot of things in life, just figure out the right, right way around. No, I did. I came home. I said, I think God has something for our community on this or anybody who comes. And I just told our folks, look, t 
tell insurance, don't tell insurance. You figure out, but this is going to happen. So it was a huge, massive blessing last year, and we're happy for it again. And I should just get out of your way and just let you do your thing. So go take it off. All right. Thanks, Brian. This is a big horse, y'all. <laughs> um, mamas. My mama is here, and we flew her out from Idaho, is where I'm from. I love you, mama. If I could have all the moms stand, let's just honor our moms. Can I pray over you moms while you're standing? Stay standing for a second because um, Father, I thank you for every woman standing right now and the gift of being a mom, a gift of being a woman, this beautiful expression of one that gives life. It's your the feminine heart that I think you're got on such beautiful display in this room. So thank you for the feminine expression of your heart and the goodness that you do in family. And for every mother that's here, we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this is a really special day. And um, this horse I haven't met yet. Uh, I've noticed that he really liked the horses on the screen. I was glad that he stayed in the pen and didn't take off with them because I'm not sure where they went. But he's a little bit confused about it too, I think. But uh, I'm going to get in here with him and we'll just start moving him around a little bit because if you look at him, he looks like a perfectly fine horse. What's wrong with him? Um, the biggest thing wrong with him is that he doesn't know who he is and nobody's told him yet. And he's actually lived his life this long thinking that his sole purpose is to eat grass and rest he's looking at himself <laughs> so as you can see the he's got a great brain for a horse but he can only see so much and he has no idea who he is what he was built for and he's lost in what we'll just call his instincts because he's just doing what comes natural to him but what I want to do is teach him that he is built for so much more. Wow, you are beautiful, buddy. Isn't he? My goodness. This is gonna get Western. Hmm. So I need for him to understand that I'm here and that I'm gonna ask him for some direction to take some steps. And as I can at least convince him that I'm here and that I want to have a conversation with him. Come on. He's saying a whole lot of things to me right now. So maybe this is where the whispering comes in. You probably can't hear it, but he's saying a whole lot. And he's very alert, very aware of everything that's going on. And he's got a lot of questions, but he hasn't asked the right question yet. Because the only thing he's trying to do right now is figure out how do I get away from, or how do I get safe? What's my options here? But he hasn't asked what I wanted yet. And whenever he'll ask me what I want, he's gonna be really surprised because I'm not wanting anything from him. I'm wanting to give something to him. And I want all this anxiety and the prison that he's trapped in. The prison isn't this fence. The prison is his mindset. He doesn't see what I see. And when God came in the form of Jesus and revealed to us the visible image of an invisible God, 
he said, here I am. And I am love perfected. And all the power of heaven came. It's a good question. It is a really good question. He's trembling. He's so nervous. So I want you to remember this because fear is, is really what's running him right now. And I don't want to feed into his fear. But until he lets me touch him, lets me be close to him, it's all going to be an invitation. He gets to decide what he's going to do with all this. Hmm. Very alert. Well, you're kind of making me nervous. I'm so glad that we have a father that's not afraid of us. I'm so glad that even though I have this awe and wonder of like, God, how did you do all this? Like, you're so powerful. Are you really this kind? Maybe. just talk to him here for a second and I know we're moving pretty fast here but I'm going to invite you right into something because if I came all this way and we did all this work for you guys to be entertained what an incredible waste I believe God has established this day to be a day that's going to mark the rest of your life that a revelation on the goodness of God and the power of God and what it is that he's going to do in your life from this point forward starts now. But the invitation is just what you got to watch with him. Are we going to keep moving? Are we going to keep our attention going all these different directions? Or will we just sit still for a second and say, Holy Spirit, do whatever it is that you want to do in my life. So if you want, I'm going to ask you to join me and hold your hands out like you're going to get a present. And say, Holy Spirit, do whatever you want to do in my life. Hmm. Okay, some of you have just thought about that. Do you really want that? Holy Spirit, do whatever you want to do in my life. I cannot imagine one of my sons coming to me and saying, Father, will you help me? Father, will you help me understand? Will you, will you teach me? And me just saying no. So I already know what our Father wants to do here. He wants every one of us to have this beautiful encounter that's going to make it to where we walk out of those doors a different person than walked in here. And I don't know whether we'll get very far with this horse, but I do know that 
the opportunity still stands and I'm gonna do whatever I can to try to earn his trust because he doesn't trust me yet. But he is asking the right question. I just want connection with him. I don't want him, I actually don't have any control over him. This is completely out of control. But as I communicate with him, those wide eyes, see that look? I know. <laughs> They'll soften. Boy, it's her big, beautiful eyes. Isn't that something, Britton? What if the gaze of heaven is like this? What if our Father's this intent to just look at you and say, can I teach you? Will you trust me? Hmm. actually been having quite a conversation here and he's kind of got his boundaries where he's comfortable and he's not mad he's not so much even scared he's just wrestling with some thoughts right now about what his instinct is saying that he should do and what it is that he's actually feeling internally There's probably a lot of you in this room that are feeling that way. I kind of am. I'm not sure what to feel right now. This is about 1,200 pounds of muscle that is nothing but raw potential. And I want him to feel me. I want him to know that connection and oneness has always got to be the most important thing that I'm not here to take his freedom away from him because if he lives like this his whole life you're just gonna have to keep him in a pen and keep him away from traffic and just keep him fed he'll live a lot like a cow wouldn't that be a waste of a life 
with all that this horse is capable of doing, that he would stand around and just try to survive. And I think that so much of our, our culture is doing that. We're, we're just intoxicated with our busyness and our possessions and our entertainment. And we're just, it's dumbing us down from what it is that we were created for. You were created in the image of God to carry his presence and to be the one that influences the world. It means that we, we can't just live like the world. I have possessions. I love money. I love food. I love entertainment. I love all the stuff. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that what does it look like for me to seek first the kingdom? Do I want what God wants? And I can say with my whole heart that I do. I want it for every one of you in this room. I want it to be on display here with this horse. My heart for this horse is so pure that he doesn't understand it. And I believe our Father's heart towards you is so pure. All he wants is to give you freedom. He wants to be able to entrust things to you to where we can be the one that leads the nations. to create distance I don't want him to create distance I don't want him to feel like he's even doing anything wrong I'm not mad at him for being afraid all of his instinct was to keep me off his back have to continue to ask the questions of my goodness. Yeah, not so funny. Right here. Yeah. 
Remember this? Huh? Had a boy. Remember this? Whoops. I'm sorry, that was my fault. for me. about the people that are with Jesus that made him so brave and they would be considered ordinary untrained men and women they hung out with Jesus and everybody recognized their courage because of it we've got to get rid of the fear folks quit being so concerned on what the world is doing and impressed with what the enemy's doing Let's be fascinated with what God's doing. That families are surviving and flourishing. That men are getting whole. Women are finding their voice. Families are building for generations. We still have a nation that's filled with people that call on the name of Jesus. And if we don't like our politics, please don't empower them to change who you become. If we got a government by the people, for the people, then let's decide what kind of people we are. And then the government will follow. We can't make excuses anymore. another side. It's a whole other side. Huh? It's good though. Think of my heart. Think of mountain where I run. The fountain I drink from. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide to ransom for my life. Oh, he is my song. And let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, he is my song. The shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, he is my song, cause you are good, you're good. think I should punish him? You're saying for what? Well, by God, he ought to listen to me, don't you think? You know, I'm being silly now, but why is it that we, we think that God's that way with us? How many times will he let us come back? How many times will he come back to this place to where, remember, I want you to be here with an unveiled face. I want you to look into a mirror 
and see the glory of the Lord. I want you to see what I see. And when your identity becomes that, you'll do whatever you're created to do. You don't have to be told what to do. It's gonna be heaven inside of you. Holy Spirit filled. silly you for not clapping, but he was built to carry me. You were built to carry God's presence. Whatever fear has separated you from the love of God, it's not even real. He said that even angels can't separate you from the love of God. I don't know why that's significant, but it is. That nothing can separate you from the love of God. But what are you going to partner with? Is there any separation? Because this oneness isn't one because of me forcing him. It's just levels of trust that he's learning to walk into. And it takes time. Like this is super, super fast with a horse like this to get this far. And if he did nothing else today, he did so good. But I feel like there's just more for him because I don't want him to tiptoe around afraid he's gonna make a mistake. This is a war horse. This dude was built to charge into things. He'll run through fire. He'll do whatever is necessary because he's going to be a horse that's so filled with love, so filled with purpose, that all this strength isn't going to be used to hurt anybody. This strength isn't going to be used to dominate. All this strength is going to be used for us to serve. See, the sons and the daughters of God know how to serve really well. But if you see yourself as a servant of God, Sometimes you miss the joy of being a son or a daughter. Did you hear what I said? If you see yourself as a servant, you might be missing this joy of just being one of the beloved ones. His instincts aren't going to run him the rest of his life. They're going to be brought into submission. Yeah, can we move just a minute? Yeah, I don't mind the slow steps. I really don't. <laughs> yeah. But see, he's building confidence. He's never carried anything before, so it's really weird. And I know that so many of you, you you're believers. We believe in what the Bible says. You believe in God. 
But he said something crazy about belief. He said, even the demons believe and they tremble. It's not just what we say we believe, it's what are we actually gonna yield to? Is fear still the thing that is the loudest voice in your head? Or do you feel, tangibly feel the love of God in this room? I want all the fear to fall off, all the stress to fall off. And I'm not just sitting here on this horse so I can keep talking. I'm actually waiting for something because I want him to find his great reward. It's going to be kind of like a deep breath. He's going to lick his lips because he's actually waiting, wondering what I'm going to do. And I'm just waiting for him to do it. That's a word for somebody here. You're still waiting for God to do something. He's asked you to do it. Hmm. That'll get somebody in trouble. <laughs> He's so magnificent. I would hate to see an animal like this just get wasted or get abused. I think he's already been through some tough stuff, y'all. This, this didn't just happen because he hasn't been handled. This isn't just um, instincts. Something's happened and he doesn't know how to trust and it's not his fault. It's not your fault. The beauty in getting all that shame off of you, wondering why it is that you're still so jacked up or so triggered or fearful, it really isn't, really isn't your fault. But what Jesus does is he comes and he loves and he binds up those broken pieces and he makes it to where, but now you have the power to do something about it. It does become something that you get to now steward. Are you gonna continue to hang on to fear and regret? Or are you gonna grab hold of this unconditional, unshakable, immovable love of God that has literally pursued you today We came after him because we wanted him to experience this. And his kindness is going to make it where hmm.
remember he didn't want me getting on from that side. It was just a different approach. I don't know how you've seen Jesus up until this point, but I pray that you're getting to see something different. You can see yourself differently. Is Jesus really this real, this intentional? To make it to where this is not anything that I could ever say. You just have to see it. You have to feel it. You need to experience it. This is a different animal. Yeah, he's got a ways to go. And if you knew his past, you'd be all the more proud of him. Because of fear of rejection, fear of abandonment, fear of failure, fear of punishment, all the stuff that Jesus said that he would kill. That's what we're doing. Typically, um, I put a saddle on him at this point. But the only reason I would do that is for my own sake, not for his sake. I would want to prove something or make a point. He's worth, he's worth more than that. Like, we don't get to exploit each other just because we feel like we're doing something good with it. There's a whole lot of people that allow the end to justify their means and we just don't take care of each other. We can get the jobs done, but we've missed the first thing that our Father asked of us is to, can we just love each other? As you've loved yourself, He's got to be so convinced of my love for him that it'll transform something in his heart. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. That ain't about dying, y'all. And there's no shadows without light. These shadows are surrounding him because he's surrounded by light. And many of you feel like you're walking around in the shadows like this has been a dark season. The light's just behind it. It's around the next corner. Maybe now it's all that you see. The shadows seem to fade when you look at the light. And whatever Holy Spirit's doing in this room right now, because you gave him permission to, just cooperate with it. No longer. It's a, he's no longer a slave to this fear. He didn't break it off himself. Jesus came and broke it off. Fear doesn't run my heart anymore. Yes, I do get scared, but it doesn't get to boss me around anymore because Jesus broke that. I think we can try to clap. Let's try to clap for a second. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Because what he's doing is he's becoming more aware of my presence than y'all's. And this is what happens to someone who's so captivated by the love of God that everything else seems to get minimal. It's not like we can go through life with our head in the clouds, but we can have heaven's perspective towards earth to where now all the things that seem so insurmountable, 
all the impossible situations, just they're just not so big because we actually get to see it from a perspective from, God, what do you see in this? Are you hopeless? I don't think so. All I see is a whole bunch of hope. <laughs> All right, we'll try it a little bit. Can we worship? Huh? Yes. Let's, let's do some worship. What if this became your reality? Can you embrace the truth of God's goodness and the way that he has pursued you? And that today, that this isn't just another service, this isn't something to just watch and observe, that this is something that you're being invited into? He's breathing really hard. And it's not just because he's running around in circles. He's processing a whole lot of trauma right now. He's, he's getting rid of trauma right now. He's breathing it out. Because all of that anxiety that he's carried for so long, like only love can drive that out. You can't scare it out of him. You can't beat it out of him. This is why we can look at a planet that the love of God is being poured over and people just go through their days as though there is no God. It really is his goodness that's being revealed. And if you look again at your life, you're gonna start seeing all the ways that God is just so intentionally revealing himself to you and pouring his heart out over you. where I was at for a second. I want to get on him one more time just so that we leave on a on a good note. A really good one.
is those transitions, it's a big deal. And Brian's gonna come up here and we're gonna have a transition simply because I gotta get on a plane tomorrow and go home. So I can't stay here forever as much as I want to. Like I just love what Jesus is doing right now in this room. I love the fact that I get to sit on a horse in this building and visit with you as my family. It's so good. But you've got a family that's been devoted to you for decades. And the Tome family has given themselves away so that you can benefit from it. Did you just wake up? <laughs> I hate it when I fall asleep in church. But because they've devoted their lives to this family as a mother and a father, I just want to honor them today as we welcome Brian up, up here. You can clap. <laughs> What, um, what is the, tell them more about, more about why you chose not to put a saddle on him, because three other horses you went that route, what was, hey, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I hope we got that on camera. <laughs> hey. Because it would be really intimidating and uncomfortable and we would let, end this thing with him afraid. And I want to end this with him being confident. He's confident enough for me to get on and off him. Um, he has actually just overcome. He's been born again. This is a brand new horse. He's just beginning his journey. And I don't want to disrupt it. Yeah. Because it's what I'm supposed to do next. Yeah. Great. Great. Well... I hope you got the, the metaphor. If not, I'll just make sure you get it. Todd is God, and the horse is us. I mean, the horse looks more powerful than Todd, but I mean, I guess in some ways it is, but it's not more powerful than God. The horses are always the same. They never change anything. Nothing in the world ever gets changed by a horse. They do the same thing, eat grass, run places, whatever, whatever. Todd can process. Todd can manipulate things. Todd, Todd can use tools. He can, he's smarter. He, he's even more powerful. So we think that we're real strong. We think that we've really got something going on. But no, God, God is the one who has it going on. And he doesn't manhandle us or else we would have all been manhandled by now. He has a loving disposition to us. That's why the Bible says God is love. Is love. Two messages for two different types of people today. The first message is for those of us, I think, who are, oh, I don't know, we've been believers, Christians, churchgoers, or whatever you want to call it for a long time, but our idea of following God has been about following the rules and, and you know, doing the right thing. It's been all about a morality thing instead of a relationship with God thing. And I'm just wondering if we could just those of us who are like that, just, just tell God sorry for putting, putting him in the, in the rule keeper camp or thinking him as a creature that is anything but loving towards us. Just, just, just tell him sorry. Okay, God, God, we just want to say sorry for putting you in a box. I want to say sorry for not seeing your true nature. It isn't you, it's us. We thank you for how good you are to us. Thank you for being a loving and kind Father. Amen. And then to others, others of us, uh, maybe we came in here and we're watching that, circle, that horse run around here and we feel like, that's me. I'm just running around in circles. I look good and I'm prancing around, but that's, I'm just running around in circles. Running away from God, running away from my purpose, running away from having a true, genuine encounter. There's a moment where that horse, it's happened all four times, where the horse posted up and turned and looked at Todd. Running around in circles and post up and turn. And every time I saw Todd do this over four services, I knew that was the critical moment. Like, boom, I acknowledge you. I'm looking at you. 
and walks towards him. Maybe this is your time to post up. Just, just look and walk towards Jesus. You can say a prayer that many of us have said. It goes something like this. If you want to receive him and come under his power and be set free, to have more power and more of a life than you could have imagined and being in a relationship with him. You can just say a prayer that says something like this. Jesus, I want you in my life. I'm sorry for my rebelliousness. I'm sorry for my sin. I want your power inside of me. Your Holy Spirit, fill me. And I will run with you the rest of my days. Run with you, not run away from you. Amen. Amen. Why don't we all stand? Let's sing that uh, song we just did. Justin, okay, let's do this again. Sing, I love your voice. I love your voice, oh, you have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. I love your voice, yes, God. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known sides of that song. In just a moment, we're going to have uh, prayer people are going to come down. We're going to fill the front of this. We'd love to pray for you. Maybe uh, you just need a, a human touch on your shoulder and someone to pray for you just like this horse did. And uh, powerful things can happen with prayer. We'd love to pray for you. So we're going to come up front and pray for you in a little bit. Anybody wants to come down? But the tension point is this, this verse here. His goodness is running after you. You're not here by accident. You're not here by accident. God saw that you were going to be here one day. He saw that you were going to see this. And he's been setting you up for this moment. And his goodness has been running after you. And how we get all of that goodness is we lay our life down before him. My life laid down. I surrender all. I give you everything. What has this horse lost today? It hasn't lost anything. It's only gained. Let's sing that song one more time. Then we're going to hear from our community pastors. Sing your goodness. Your goodness is running after, it's running after, sing it together. Your goodness is running after, it's running after, sing your goodness. Your goodness is running after, it's running after, sing it loud. 